Well, hello, retro computing enthusiasts. Welcome back to my channel. Mike here, and it's the day after Christmas, and I'm back to hacking my Naboo, which I thought about all day yesterday, I have to tell you. Um, where we left off in the last video, I was, I'd was i gotten Hello World up on the screen using some code by Chris Sakula off of uh, GitHub, but... Um, it was just limited to the characters forming Get it, Hello World. There was, didn't have the whole font on there. And um, I was having trouble dealing with the font that I think I found in the Nabu ROM. But uh, while I was over on GitHub, I found uh, something by J.B. Langston. He had a bitmap font created for uh, the TI-9918. Um, it's an entire 256 character font, so I downloaded that hacked myself together a new and improved Hello World program. So let me uh, let me zoom in on the screen for you. And we'll fire up the old Naboo. And you can see what we got going on now. Yes. Look at that. 256 characters including lots of special characters, line drawing characters, Greek characters, punctuation, you name it, we got it. Um, the card suits, everything. So, got a complete 256 character font. So, that's great. Hello World is working good. So, alright. I'm pretty happy with uh, the state of the video display right now. The text mode video display is working pretty darn good. So, for my next trick, I'm going to concentrate on getting the keyboard up and working, I think. Um, concentrate on code for that so that I can type at the keyboard and have it appear on the screen. We'll see how long it takes me to do that, okay? Now, in, after the last video came out, one or two people commented and suggested that I just download some ROMs some other people have created um, and, and burn them and plug them in. And it's like, yeah... I could do that, but what's the fun in that? <laughs> you know, I'm kind of enjoying, even though it's been a little frustrating at times, I'm kind of enjoying hacking out my own code here and going my own way. You know, if I hit a stumbling block or decide that uh, it's just too much trouble or um, that these folks have done a better job than I can do, then yeah, maybe I'll do that. But I've got to play around with this a little while longer and see what else I can come up with. I'm getting close to having a TV typewriter here. Getting really close. So, once I got a TV typewriter, all I got to do is, you know, insert um, a basic interpreter between the keyboard input and the screen output, and hey, I got a working computer. So, I'm going to play around with this a little while longer and uh, see what I come up with. And we'll see how far I get in this video. Okay, guys, it's a little while later. The keyboard has actually proved to be a lot less of a challenge than the video display. Get fired up here. Look at that. There's all that. Now I can type. Not perfect. Got a little bit of an issue. Um, the keyboard is working great. I'm getting whatever character I type. I'm getting spaces, whatnot. Issue I am having, though, is every few seconds, I get that funky little character showing up. So I'm not sure why. I don't know if the keyboard periodically sends some sort of status character over. What I might have to do is rewrite my uh, my keyboard uh, reading code. And basically, I'm just polling the keyboard. And whenever um, it, the the UART says it has a byte available, I read it out. And usually, the byte I read out is what. I send from the keyboard, but occasionally, well, I'll we'll get that. So I think I just might have to um, modify my code to ignore that. I don't know. That's kind of weird. I don't know why that's there. Anyway, I'm making good progress, though. I think I'm, I'm getting close to having what I want. So let me go play with it a little bit more. All right, guys, check this out. Check this out. Let me turn it on. Oh, blank screen. But what happens if I type now? 
Look at that. <laughs> now we've got a proper Hello World program. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. I mean, that's, it, it's got a long way to go. I need to handle scrolling. I need to handle cursor position. I need to be able to handle carriage return, line feed. Uh, I need to uh, have a clear screen subroutine. So there's a lot there that needs to go into it yet, but the basics are here. I can type text on the keyboard and get it on the screen. So we've got over that hurdle, okay? Um, I filtered out that, that funky character that just kept showing up on the screen. I think it was, uh, I can't remember what ASCII character it was now, but uh, I filtered that out. It must be something the keyboard sends out periodically. You know, it wasn't regular. You know, there'd be one every few seconds, and then there wouldn't be any for a while, then there'd be one every few seconds. I don't get it. I don't know if there's a fault with the keyboard or what, but I just filtered that character out with my keyboard handling routine, so it doesn't make it out. I don't see that as being a problem in the future. I don't even know what that character is or what it would possibly be used for or what language it would be used in. So, I don't know. But we filtered that out. Everything's working. So, I'm pretty happy with the progress for today. Pretty good days hacking on the NABU. So, um, yeah. So, like I said, there's still a long way to go, but I think we've got over the worst of the hurdles. Now it's just a lot of nose to the grindstone coding, you know. Uh, basically, I have to have a terminal program in this thing running to handle the screen, and then we can put in a basic interpreter too. And, uh, well, running out of ROM space, since I can only access 4K of ROM and my character set takes up 2K of that, well, I'm probably gonna have to either modify the board to handle an 8K, 8K of ROM or um, get together some sort of mass storage for this thing. Um, Another possibility is I could use the uh, the the UART over there for talking to the NABU network. I could uh, I could use it for loading files off of my laptop too. So that's a possibility. I did that a lot with the Teletext System Master. Once I got the serial I/O working, I could just uh, write a simple little program to load a file in from um, the serial port and execute it. So that's a possibility. Um, if I could put a lot of this stuff, like the big character set, um, the basic interpreter and whatnot, elsewhere and load it in when I need it, that would be very helpful. So that's a possibility. So, well, I need to think about it and I need to work on my screen handling routines so that, uh, I can move on from there. But I think it's been a good day of hacking on the NABU. So, um... I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see the future videos, future NABU hacking videos. Check out my main channel, Omega Geek 64 There's amazing stuff going on over there. I'm going to go out and film some more later today. And thanks a lot for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.